So welcome to the effects loop. I'm Diaz. Ooh, still yawning. Oh. Hi, still yawning. I'm Dad. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm Diaz. So that's what I said. I'm Scott. And we're keeping you in the loop of the guitar community. I'm leaving that intro. Oh, that's fine with me. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. You can go to our website, which is in the description, or you can type it all in. Go to BigEarPedals.com and check out some cool stuff. I was uh, right before the episode. I was double checking to make sure that the website was BigEarPedals.com because I'm never 100% sure. And I was listening to the Albi demo that they've got on their website, and I was about to fall asleep. It's so beautiful. It's peaceful. It's very nice. Too. So go get one. Um, I want one. Do we have a link? We don't have a link on our website to Big Ear Pedals, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, then don't go to that. You can just so see you at a Big Ear we'll Pedals. Send, we'll send a, crit, a message to Chris in like three months. There will be a link. Don't worry, guys. By the time you're yeah. listening to this episode, those four people who seem to be going through our old back library, <laughs> this one's for you. <coughs> There's always a couple of people creeping through. It's always yeah, fun. It's, 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 it's always funny when you see an episode like creeping up out of nowhere. Hi, this is this is hello from Diaz from the future. Wait, it's from the this future or like no, this is from the past. No, no, no. We, I I would be in the future. Hello, the future past? Diaz's. Oh, hello, people. Hello, future listeners. Um, let me know how that COVID thing works out. Because <sighs> it ain't going so great right now. We're on COVID round two. Dude, this is like round four the delta variant like that's the that was, that's that name of the movie covid19 the delta variant so out of curiosity was the uk variant gamma like are they I going in are they going in alphabetical order so there was like the alpha and the beta variant and then the gamma and then the delta i don't know what what's next eta i don't know beta eta eta eta, eta. uh the eta we're gonna be done in about an hour okay um yeah i don't know uh the german alphabet but anywho also thank you thank know, you fraternity hazing for making me memorize the greek <laughs> alphabet uh yeah um i'm i live in knoxville and our fraternity hazing is does not have a great national uh look <laughs> you know outlook um but chugging all right anywho uh <laughs> speaking of that uh thanks to our patrons for supporting this episode as well if you want to join the group where we don't do that uh go <laughs> go to patreon.com slash the effects loop and you can, you can give us money and it makes us happy and we'll keep doing this as long as people are paying even if you don't pay we'll still do this so but we should start charging a subscription fee that's what everyone else is doing never pay to listen to the episode just pay to listen who was the company that did that horrible advertisement huh the advertisement where they're like never pay for upgrades again but you have to pay for the subscription to get the upgrades oh slate slate yeah. digital did that yeah yeah i don't think you guys understand how paying for things works in the long run yeah or like uh i don't know I, I, you haven't bought airline tickets recently have you uh not really oh god i just bought some for a trip i'm planning on taking and it's just like i i actually had to go through all the way to get into like the put your credit card moment in because there's mm -hmm. just hidden fee after like a little thing they try to keep charging you for next it's like on united they just kept like nickel and diming you and they're like oh yeah you get to pick your seat oh by the way none of the seats that you can pick are available it's well like, oh, the thing come on yeah the, th the cool thing is i fly allegiant usually and they're really cheap. Like it, it, sometimes it's your turn to be the pilot. <laughs> you get this. Guy. <laughs> I, I've never, I've never heard of this airline. <laughs> yeah, it's that small. <laughs> like, like it's. <laughs> I mean, they they don't have a. I don't think they have a Boeing. They probably got a a Boeing. Like really, <laughs> everything's really small. <laughs> like it, it's it's kind of funny. People it's, ask, it's, is Allegiant a real airline? <laughs> Is that on Google? How do I get a human at Allegiant? <laughs> what days does Allegiant fly? <laughs> no, they only fly certain days to certain air airports. Like, I'm not kidding. 
<laughs> like like Jeez. like Mondays and Wednesdays go to Orlando or something some shit like that. Like it's it's legit. Is is that a way just to guarantee you have no business travelers ever? <laughs> the only people you fly with are are crying babies <laughs> and hockey teams. <laughs> no, they're out. <laughs> They're, it, it's it's kind of a weird airline, but I mean they've gotten me places before, so oh, good on them. Google also wanted to remind me that Allegiant was the second in the Divergent series, which I don't even think they finished that trilogy, did they? <laughs> I don't know. I think they made the Divergent and Allegiant, and I don't think they made a final one, did they? Yeah, United. <laughs> it's, <they're> just, <laughs> it's all airlines. <laughs> oh, why was that funny? All right. Um, yeah, anywho. Oh, Insurgent. Page. Ooh, there was Ooh. a third one. Mm, okay. Well, we know what Scott's doing tonight. Kate Winslet's in it, and you use that as justification that I should watch a movie earlier, so I'll get that back to you. I mean, she does a great job. Yeah. Whatever. Same that rating w- as The Hunger Games, so that tells you how bad of a movie it is. Yeah. Or, or now you see me too, which is the worst named movie ever. It should be I don't know. now you see me, and then now you don't. <laughs> that's true. And if you want to hear a... two hours of a rant on that from Dan Harmon, go check out his show. Um, I feel like the Fast and Furious names are a little bit worse. Oh, F nine. F nine is, is the newest one. Like Fate the of the Furious. F eight of the Furious. Do you think someone's just going through the dictionary and F words and like I, <laughs> picking a random I one? I legitimately think people at Universal Studios now are like, how can we push this so far that our fans quit on us? <laughs> but there's some, but yeah, the problem is they got all these gearheads or the, the wannabe gearheads. Like but that's, so... that's like not the draw of the movie anymore. Now the, it's a comedy. Yeah, now it's a comedy, dude. Like they, <laughs> they took Tyrese and and Ludacris and put them in a Fiero in a rocket and launched them into space while wearing scuba suits in the last one. And the whole time I, I couldn't I breathe. Feel, I was I laughing like so hard while shaking my head. Oh, sorry. Spoiler <sighs> alerts for uh, Fast Nine. Well, never mind. I guess I don't even see it now. <laughs> it was in the previews. Because at that point, I would have just paused, or I would have just stood up and walked out of the theater, and I'm like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like, I give up. <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> this, is, this is not even a real movie anymore. Nope. Nope. This nope. is literally like a Disney ride that doesn't move. <sighs> all right, what's new with you, Scott? <laughs> I was like, where are we in the schedule? Oh, not at the very beginning. Okay, okay. Did you just say schedule or schedule? Uh, did I even say that word? Yes, you said where are we in the thing? You didn't say script. You said either schedule or schedule. I was trying to see which I, way you. I normally it. say schedule. Okay. No, as I'm self conscious and I'm just sitting here. I was watching Thirty Rock, and that was uh, twofer. That does seem like a twofer thing. That was a twofer thing. They all made fun of him. He's like, and they, that's the episode where they found out that Jack did the entire dictionary. And they're using his voice online. He he read the dictionary to get through college. Huh? Jack Donahue? Donahue? Sorry. He read the entire dictionary and they used his voice as an online uh like print like it learned, taught you how to pronounce things. Because they looked up the word schedule and they said schedule and he said it should have been schedule. Never mind. Huh. What's new in your gear world? Let's focus. <laughs> focus. Uh, I got a new pedal. Really? I haven't plugged it in yet, though. I haven't plugged in my MM4 yet, either. Did you ever figure out power with that thing? Yeah, it was the red cable, like you said. Okay. Um. Anyway, I got a Love Pedal Bone Tender, which is fun, because one, it's a tone bender, and then two, uh, it's Love Pedal, which, you know, I thought well, they were done. So it's yeah, good to see them there selling a little again. bit of... But wasn't there a little bit of controversy whenever they kind of dipped down? Uh, there was a lawsuit over a divorce. Okay. Well, that's none of our damn business then. Yep. But yeah, well, uh, in, it's, it's in a mini case, fuzz, so I'm happy. Yeah. yeah, in that case, welcome back, Love Pedal. Yeah. I mean, they're, they've are they been one of my favorite brands for some reason. And so... Yeah. 
So for 50 bucks, I'm on board. Oh, that's right. It was one of the flash sales. Yeah, yeah. So first one in a while. Yeah. Well, wasn't their website down for a little bit? Their website always seems like it's down, even though it's like working. But yeah. Anyway, anything new with you? Um, I got that MM4. I'm I'm not sure if I talked about it, but yeah, because we were talking about the power. But um, we were talking about that uh, privately. Oh, that was in that was in the chat room, which you can join for just five dollars a month at patreoncom slash loop. Nice uh, setup there, Scott. You're welcome. But um, yeah, uh, I think that's it. I'm I'm in a weird. We talked about I had to cut back my uh, gear spending completely, pretty much. Um, I'm looking at maybe selling some stuff. Uh, I want to get the Humboldt uh, Simplifier Deluxe. Oh, you want to get the I Deluxe wanna... one? That thing's a beast. Yeah, I will. I want to. I mean, I figure I don't want to get the normal one and then want more. You know, what's the normal one do again? Or sorry, what it's, what does the it's a single Deluxe channel. give you? Okay. The deluxe is dual channel. So you can run two amps effectively. Right. Okay. Yes. And they can be different uh, amps, stuff like that. Like, I mean. Because each on the simplifier regular, can you like the left. Oh, right, and, it has, and it has reverb, I believe. I don't think the regular one has reverb on it. Oh. Well, because you're, because the regular one has left and right in and out still, right? It can still do stereo. It just, uh, you yeah. can only change the IR on it. And I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay, or a speaker but sim or whatever. I believe it is. you. I believe you though. I looked at one pretty hard for a while. <sighs> Sorry, my yawns keep coming. Um, it's been a, it's been a life. <laughs> yeah, particularly no, but, the last week and change. And I've just been working too much. Yeah, and the cool, and you can also, uh, it's got a foot switch to change the channel and to turn it on and off on the reverb. Oh, nice. So. I, I th- it's really cool. Um, it also has a uh, stereo XLR out. So, so you're already in XLR mode, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I'll be good. Well, the other one does too, it looks like. But, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I was, I was just looking at it. I don't know. I, I've got to figure out something pedal board wise you've been, you've been kind of just going through all the different pedal board no amp <laughs> options lately yeah yeah i've just been trying stuff out really not that i i don't know i'm not really uh uh like desperate for that you know what i mean i've just enjoyed it especially being in an apartment having to keep the volume down oh i mean i don't get me wrong i i've really liked the last i've been ampless for a while now yeah year and a half or so and honestly i i'm good i like the simplicity of just plugging in and everything works and it's consistent day to day and all that kind of stuff yeah i've also had um i've got my excelsior still and i've been avoiding pulling it out but i might do that here shortly all right we'll see all right let's move on to the gear news and shall we are we speed rounding today i'm down we're 15 minutes into this episode already so we probably should probably we'll get distracted on something three minutes how long three three one and one Ex- extend and skip each let's go yeah starting yeah. all right so new uh new neighbor has the is it a il a lumen Illumins. Okay, thank you. Sorry. This is one of those weird words that you look at and yeah, all right. Uh, sorry. It, I don't think that's the normal spelling. Okay. I'm not sure. So the Illumin. Nope, normal spelling to lighten up and brighten. Well, it, or to enlighten someone in, spiritually or intellectually. That's what just happened. I got enlightened spiritually and intellectually. Um, so this is a digital reverb effects so it's pretty small in size for a full-on like hardcore digital reverb it's only yeah, got has, two buttons has new neighbor done a um art reverb like this no like nothing with all, like a screen all the reverbs in one kind of a thing yeah 
I they, think they almost, have the immerse almost... and they have like single reverb pedals. Mm-hmm. But I don't think, yeah, I don't think they've seen, I don't think they've done a full stereo, all, all the digital algor- algorithms. Well, I know together. a lot of them, I know a lot of them, like the slate you could put in almost any algorithm, right? Yeah. But it was still one at a time, not presets and MIDI and stuff. Right. Right, so this is definitely taking it to a whole nother level. Yeah. Um, I mean, with reverb, it always comes down to how good are the presets to start and then how much do you want to tweak them, right? Because like yeah. two knobs on this makes me a little hesitant. Right. Like I want more knobs. I don't want to have to pull out a laptop to be able to edit this stuff well. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, and there's 50 user presets for storing your own and then 50 factory presets so i mean there's a lot of room in there um if you need more than 50 presets Um, like what are you doing i mean you're really particular about your reverbs at that point right um another thing interesting thing so it's coming out at 379 dollars, but they said they're going to up the price after the introduction in late august for to 479 so price wise kind of just sitting there in the middle of the pack at this introductory price and then going up so clearly they think highly of it yeah i don't know that i mean the source audio stuff is cheaper that game multimedia stuff's cheaper the big sky is more expensive so right I don't know. I I wish I actually had time to prepare for the episode today, so I'd actually listen to a demo, not on the fly. Yeah. Well, New Neighbors always had amazing algorithms. I think it all comes down to how well the UI is going to be. And I really can't get a good gauge for it. Yeah, me neither. We're at time, so why don't we hop on over to, yeah. s- speaking of other new pedals, more in Biggins, the DD7, or sorry, D7 delay and the R7 reverb, giving them some more cap- extra cap- foot switch and stereo capabilities. So the R7 and the D7, originally they were, that's what they were called. Now they're the X2 versions. Um, still sort of a single size pedal, seven different presets on them. Um, uh, I think they look goofy as normal size pedals. They look better as minis. Like when they're minis, they were, they're cute. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, at the end of the day with these prices, price is the big question at the end of the day for it, but features wise, and how expensive, or actually, frankly, how cheap the uh, D7 and R7 were before. Uh, these should be a pretty great deal. Especially now going stereo and all that. Like, I'm guessing these are probably going to be about 100 to 150 bucks. I'd say 150 There's no price yet. Dang it. It's weird. These got announced like two weeks ago i would have figured the price would be out already as i stall this longer to keep talking so that i can find out no price has been confirmed according to that they're not on anything yet okay yeah i don't know yeah no prices dang it well we'll find out soon enough i wonder are they kind of waiting to see if they can raise the prices more if interest is there because I need, you know how Moore has, you know, kind of the reputation of being a cheaper company. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, I mean, they're making some legitimately decent stuff. So I could see them over time here trying to increase prices and see how much value is actually there and see if people go for it. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but I think, I mean, because out of interest is gauged by this. sorry dude you're roboting i can't hear anything i mean like i can hear things but like yeah i miss um, like half of that uh, well a lot of interest is gauged by price oh, okay yeah it, so i mean it, it is that question of like can they start kind of trickling their prices up if their stuff looks valuable enough for it you know right so we'll see we'll see um 
let's move on. Mogwai. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Mogwai frontman Stuart Bra- Braithwaite gets a signature dirt pedal from Ruiz Effects. Is that Royce Effects? Royce Effects? I'm not sure. That's a fuzz. Distortion fuzz. Op fuzz amp, tone. big muff. Seems like it's got a lot going on. So it takes inspiration from two pedals. Ooh, the Fab Tone. And then uh, Op Amp Big Muff. Um, so is it like two pedals in one on at the same time? I am i don't know. Maybe they're running parallel? Mm-hmm. I don't see an answer. But the Dan Electro Fab Tone is a freaking fantastic pedal sounds to get are that, in like... parallel rather than series so that the mix control blends between either oh, side of oh, the pedal oh, oh oh yeah diaz got it right yeah diaz got it right yeah sorry i don't i don't get wins often let me have it i didn't say anything well anywho anywho how expensive is it how is what? How expensive is it? Oh, you said how did how was Spence's visit? I was like, who's Spence? I think um, you're having internet issues on your end too, buddy. I, I know. I think I'm having distraction issues. Sorry, work is texting me, and it being annoying. Um, 199.95 in uh, euros. All right, so that'll be like 250. 250 not All bad right. for a signature pedal blended i mean at least it's a unique pedal finally i'm kind of tired of all these like signature drives where they that really are... is a unique yeah it, it's it's different than what we've seen it's not like oh hey here's my signature tube screamer cool bro i want a fab tone in a single pedal enclosure don't they exist i don't know not from dan electro no, but I'm sure somebody has reworked that circuit. No, someone has to. What? I'm gonna find out. All right. While you're finding out, I'm going to jump into our next topic, which is Vertex FX skip. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yep, I'm calling skip wanted, on them. I wanted to, I wanted to make one joke really quick. Make a joke, but I'm not talking about their products. Okay, so they came out with a Mark II, which makes me wonder who came out with a mod that they ripped off. Ah, bam. Uh, it's, just, right. it's just them making smaller versions of their already oversized pedals. Snap. Okay. No, I don't. It's just a brand I don't care about. I'll take this next one. Uh, the 29 pedals O amp is an output driver that preserves and sweetens your guitar's true signal. Hasn't this been out before? This is just like a pink version. It's a very bland looking pedal. That's very, very expensive. We've talked about this. I swear we have. What was the blue one? No, that was a different thing, wasn't it? Perhaps. It's the same brand. I know that. Yeah. I mean, it. It's a 29 dB boost of gain. Pretty sure we've talked about with this. With two filters. This was announced five days ago. Mm. What's the other thing? What are, what's the name of this company again? 29 Pedals. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is the O amp. There was the Yuna. Okay, it was. All right. It's close to the same. I got nothing. Yeah, it's a pedal. It's expensive. It's got filters and gain. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where people like it makes you sound amazing but i don't know you know i'm really Agreed. curious if you're gonna like falco's kgb fuzz just by looking at it i don't know but this pedal's 300 dollars. what the, the one we were just talking about the 29 pedals thing yeah i do want this pedal though this fuzz so the kgb fuzz hey, it has a peanut selector all fun it's different slider. things slider um, and chicken knobs yep it has three, four different knobs, three different knobs, slider, three different knob types. Kind of an odd design. You also have top-mounted jacks. And when I say top-mounted, I mean like on the pedal's face. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. It kind of looks like a channel strip just kind of laying out on there. Yeah. So it'd be great for right angle plugs. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so it's got a blend switch. It's it's very similar to the Love Tone Big Cheese, which is a very it seems like a pedal that's becoming popular again. I mean, um Josh Scott loves it. It's a uh, mm-hmm. Is it Radiohead use them a lot? I don't know. I don't listen to Radiohead. Okay. Bazinga. Okay. I don't know why it was a Bazinga, but I don't want I don't know. It, I, you know, it's okay know just to, like, you know, not like things that are other people like in just other I hate Radiohead with a passion. Okay. Anytime I listen to Radiohead, I become physically nauseous. Okay. I'm just kidding. I really don't feel that. I don't feel like that way about Radiohead. No, but do you want to talk about something that will make you physically nauseous? Yes. PRS and Flying Dog Brewery team up for a wild one-off hop elect. A hop electric se custom 24 <laughs> it is so it's the logo from the beer can on a prs se and it looks terrible <sighs> it's part of a giveaway so you yeah know. that's the only way this guitar will go somewhere is if they give it away yeah and then that's gonna no wind up on Craigslist no pay money. immediately three thousand dollars yeah so there you go kids you want it i'll be right back go hunt it yep Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm you know you just made me edit this podcast oh my god i'm not happy about it just leave it in lots of dead air you could have kept talking no one wants that could have kept talking about this SoCal style one. Mm-hmm. Is Charvel. It, it, is it just me or Charvel starting to look more like Fenders now? Yep. So it still well, has a pastel color scheme that they're using, but they're throwing white pick cards back on them. So they have more Fendery looks now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, another reaction? I just, I don't like it. I mean, do you like anything from Charvel? Not really. I owned a Charvel for like five minutes. Yeah? Yeah, I returned it. I think their Pro Mod series are actually pretty good value for what what they're making. What I had was a San Dimas Pro Mod. Yeah, I think they're they're decent guitars for features-wise. It's just like, if you're not that style of guitar player, I mean, like, they're they're meant for being shred sticks. Yeah, they're, they're very specific. So, you either dig it or you don't. So, yeah, this style one from the that adds white pick guards back to the fluorescent colors. They've got maple, they've got rosewood, fingerboards, locking, Floyd's, humbucker, single humbucker, load ends. And coming in about 1050 bucks. Yeah. That's, uh... Anything I missed in there? No, I'm just waiting for this next thing. You can start it anytime you want. Ah, uh, ESP. Reviving the Rainbow Crackle finish. For- Kylo! He- Scott doesn't want to edit this. Come on. Scott doesn't want to edit it. Quit being a jerk. They got people outside painting. Go! Think about what you've done. You're you're making Scott's job harder than it has to be. I've already done that. No. It's, Kylo's a true DS. He really is. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is gonna really piss Scott off. Let's do it. Yeah. Twice. Yeah, yeah, do it. Tell me about it. Hey. What do you think about Scott? Oh, he just got really quiet. He does not like you. All right, anywho, speaking of things we don't really like, this ugly finish. Wh- who wants this? Uh, I don't, but I, I get, it's, I don't get, I it. get it. I, I don't. It's, it's eighties. It is horrible. It's, it's popular with the youths right now that they like, uh, 
they like these crazy outlandish 80s loud things anyway whole pretty much the whole line has this kind of finish so it's like it's like a black finish that's crackling over rainbows rainbow lava yeah ah oh, very neon I'm what, are, what are the price on these two dollars uh you know esp and ltd are like i have no idea how much they cost ever you know mm. like i have no idea how to gauge what they are or what what they should be and there's no link on this thing so yeah they're ugly <sighs> they have real pickups like name brand Duncan's in them and stuff locking Floyd Rose 1000 so probably around a thousand bucks yeah, price point ugly yeah LTD All right. 87 Eclipse 1100 bucks oh man is what the standard ones to do i i don't know if you gotta pay more for that correct finish because that's not yeah, what's yeah. on sweet water Ugh. i mean i think they actually look better than the plain just black loss but that's me that's you all right tell us about the next thing let's move on um is it my turn i guess it is well my internet's acting up so all right well Factory images have surfaced of the notorious modern Gibson Jimi Hendrix S type. Are they really going through this? Yes, they are. Have you seen Sometimes it yet? I worry about the people over there. I haven't seen the new one, and my internet's acting up. Let me pull it up. So you've got. You know, reverse bridge pickup, three single coils, strap body ish kind of thing, reverse headstock. It's got a oh little Oh my God. Bit of a what thing. ugly. No, this has got to be fake. Yeah. This has got to be fake. Yeah. What's up with that white right there at the headstock? Like it's Photoshop poorly. Yeah. Well, no, it is because people are trying to like recreate photos because what what actually happened was there's these photos from the factory floor that people are noticing looks like they came up with their own tremolo system too this is this is, can't be real this has got to be fake news i don't want it regardless i don't want it to be real there's no way this is real i don't know i Again, people keep slapping Jimi Hendrix's name on stuff like it's like it's okay to do. And then like, oh, yeah, Jimi would have played this because Jimi would have played anything modern. I'm like, no, Jimi would have played what Jimi wants to play. Stop assuming it. Welcome to the effects loop. Jimi Hendrix would have listened to us. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's all right. That's episode title. Jimi Hendrix would have listened to us. Sure. Um, anyway, I know how to edit. Do you... Uh, <laughs> Do you want to go into what court is coming out here? Yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but the new X500 Menace dials up the aggression. Mm. This does make me feel aggressive. Like a chainsaw. Like, I want to play Limp Biscuit on this. He plays Jackson's now. Well, he also plays Helix, too. He had amps on stage. Hello, but they canceled their tour. It was amazing to see Limp Bizkit make the front page news on like CNN and stuff like that in yeah. 2021. Who'd have thunk it? Hmm. I don't know. They've always been pretty talented at getting in the news. Anyway, the X500 goes for $850. Compound radius, ebony fretboard, 24 frets, 25 and a half inch scale, two humbuckers, Floyd. Everything is black, except for the frets. Wow. I'm good. Mm. Yeah, you won't see me playing one. Did any, actually, fun part, any of the guitars we went through today, none of them were interested in, interesting enough for us, were they? 
No, not really. Well, what do you think about the Picasso? <sighs> that's the one that they play the like on the acoustic. I haven't looked at the link, but I'm guessing it's the one that's always on my Facebook feed. Yeah, these were like I'm just getting ads for these right now, so I'm like, ah, I'm throwing mm -hmm. them in the rundown. I would like to mess with one. I'll say that. I mean, but it would have to be like ten dollars mess with maybe. Yeah, this actually, I hate to say nice things about these things because let's look. Like, oh, I'm tired of it. Um, Gosh, damn, eighty dollars? Nope. Oof. Yeah. No. Nope. Um, so what I've seen with these like mini bows because I've seen two or three different versions of this, or, or like, yeah. attempts to make bows for guitars because mm -hmm. Jimmy Page and actually Sarah Lipstate does that now with her stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, a big bow, a guitar is not radius enough to really work well with a bow. Right. And so this solves the problem by letting you just go in and out of the sound hole on your acoustic. So it does sort of solve a problem. But I don't know how many people are playing a bowed um, acoustic line at the same time. I... Uh... <sighs> $80, I know. Though. If it was 50 bucks, it gets into the novelty gift territory. Right? $80. Like, yeah. I mean... I'd rather have an Evo. I don't know how much like, Evos cost anymore, but like these... About $80, 80 used. Yeah. I mean, like, all day. If you got $80, you can have an Evo. So. <sighs> oh. Oh. All right, let's talk about these Black Mountain Thumb Picks. Uh, whatever's going on with these so someone came up with a new way to do the thumb pick where it has a hinge that's all i can really tell how much are these seven I don't for know. 45 bucks not bad and it comes with a thumb picking jump start course from blues guitar institute Ooh. you can also get three for 20 bucks if you just want to dip your toe in the water i don't hate this but I've never... I wonder how well the hinge works with, like, up picking. That's what I'm worried about. Like, does what it come loose? Get, what, do you, what if you get really intense? Hmm. I don't know. Sounds like we're running out of energy already. Um. Oh, yeah, the last thing, the clipper. So this is an yeah, idea. Clipper. So I'm getting ads for this a lot, and I've seen this before. Okay. So sometimes when you see people write in chord progressions, it's like one, four, five, four, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. This gives you different voicings of the chords on the fly. So you can sit there and go, no, I'd rather do this like inversion and then this. And so you can dirt, 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 just kind of play it like that. And then mm -hmm. you can drop that as MIDI straight into chord progressions on um, like Ableton and stuff. So it could be an interesting tool for people who want to do songwriting. Um, at the end of the day, you still have to be able to play your music. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, for people who aren't good with... Actually, I, I would think this would be great for guitar players who don't really know piano key voicings. Right. And you're trying to lay down synth lines or pads or those kind of things. Could be a useful tool. If I remember right, it wasn't that expensive either. No, I don't think it was. I'm just agreeing with you. I don't know. I didn't see the price. Yeah. Yeah. I was just being, you know, let's hit buy now. It's 24 euros. So it's half off right now. So that's cool. Again, I've seen people do these. Uh, I've seen apps on the phone that does this and stuff like that. And I always mm -hmm. remind people, I'm like, hey, use this to learn theory. Don't use this instead of learning theory. But yeah, it's, um, it's a good tool for when you're like, I, I just need to spice up whatever I'm doing. And then you'll go. Like, if you know theory on top of that, you can go, okay, cool. This voicing sounds better. Okay, I'm, mm, I'm going to use that voicing more often. So, I I can see it being a cool tool for people getting better at writing music. I don't know. Yeah, you, no, what, I, I like I, it. Diaz, I think you should buy it, use it, and then send a song in the 60 Cycle Hum. I already sent a song in the 60 Cycle Hum. Did you? I feel like, yo, it was my masterpiece. That's, oh yeah if you can find it i wish i could look remember the episode hold on if i can find the episode 
<laughs> all right sorry some other day but um with that that's the end of our list yeah let's get out of here i got work to do we got stuff to do guys all right um for the uh, wait hold on so thank you to our sponsor big ear pedals go to big buy some cool stuff listen to the albi demo that's on there and, and fall asleep because it's so peaceful um thank you to our patreon supporters you can join the people we're thinking right now um if you're not part of that we're not thanking you so to be thanked you have to go to patreon.com slash the effects loop and sign up and at that point we will thank you so thanks ahead of time um for the effects loop i'm diaz i'm scott and we will see you guys next week or or sometime soon yeah or or not i don't know we don't we don't know what we don't know what could happen i know we're kind of we're kind of in vacation period so who knows what happens wow that's why we're doing interviews because we're still producing content for you even on weeks we're not here yeah we're doing the stuff that you don't want to do that we don't want to do either but we're doing it oh speaking of which that did you listen to our Chijima episode yeah did you are we are we recording right now we're still recording yeah so now you've gone on record public record that you've listened to it yeah (laughs) okay do (laughs) you Can, can we stop with the interrogation now <laughs> no check that out um they were they were pretty cool ran down a lot of what their brand's about and cool stuff so if you haven't checked out last week's app with them that was pretty cool we got another one in the can already and we'll have a few more over the next couple months uh yeah. stuff like that or a couple weeks frankly um stuff like that like like diaz will interview somebody he'll set it up and record it right yeah yeah, that's 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 gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. I'm excited. <laughs> Cannot wait. All right, we can say goodbye. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. what i had for breakfast <laughs> cocaine and for lunch cocaine and for dinner let me guess more cocaine <laughs> what is it metal, <laughs> is my lockups the cocaine clown i was like i do cocaine i have no idea about a cocaine clown did you ever watch my, my, i feel like you would have watched my lock uh-uh no i never got into it I, there's still time i guess that was on adult swim wasn't it it was yeah, no. I like on Adult Swim. I usually watch like Family Guy and like, stuff like that. I don't know. I wasn't. I didn't get huge into Adult Swim. I watch Rick and Morty. See, I've I've never really watched Rick and Morty. My kids want me to watch it. They're like, you'll love it, but I can just I never never sit around just going. You know what? I want to watch Rick and Morty. It gets me depressed. Wow. It's okay. really it's it's pretty nihilistic. So like, there's a lot of <laughs> moments where you just kind of finish it. You're like, wow, there's no hope. I don't think that's what I need right now in yeah, my life, so I'm not gonna watch that. I also thought it was weird they did a Rick and Morty cameo in Space Jam. Oh yeah, hey. I've got a Rick and Morty uh, pipe. Uh, that sounds about right. I mean, yeah. Don't stop.